until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the formation at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times, they keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manna that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Through general knowledge, you are not a Christian. Yes. <laughs> At least praise God. You are a Christian now. Through general knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Want to read? Okay. Just listen. He produces first for living. That's number one. Number two, he produces a life. He produces a life that is beyond human frailties and limitations. He produces a life that is beyond human frailties and limitations. John chapter 8 verse 32. I, I, I want you to look up carefully and hear me. You know who made this statement? Huh? You don't know who made this statement? your savior are you seeing it okay let me tell you this
Did you ever read your Bible where it says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion? Okay. Just watch. I want to look at two things. He says, no, he says, number one, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Number two, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of the fire. Where is the fire? In our courts. God is a consuming fire, not the fire of sacrifice. They are afraid to come for that. Why? Because though they have been saved, they are not living right. You are not getting it. Oh God, make them get it. Oh God. I don't know. I, I just don't know how to take how to take you from here to where you should be right now. Lord, what do we do? For these people, these type of people. All right, let's try again. Start with the tabernacle and then go to First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Or let's just see. Just tabernacle first and let's see what follows. Okay. All right. Everybody look up. In this diagram, where does God himself live? Huh? He lives in the Holy of Holies, where you have the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. Okay? That country there's also have the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. All right? That's where God lives. Okay. And God sits inside. Okay? And from inside, he says, I will that those outside of this entire tabernacle, I will that they be saved. That means come inside the tabernacle. All right? And then, I will that when they come to the tabernacle, they can come further. Not just stop at the outer court. I will that they will move from outer court to a holy place. I will that they will move from holy place to the most holy place. Why? To meet me. Why should they meet me? Because I formed them for my glory. When they meet me, they go out to manifest my glory. So God is calling you. God is inside. For our God is a consuming fire. So he's inside. In those days, when the priest went in, they tied bear on the priest's legs. If they don't hear any noise, they know the priest has died. And they go inside and bring out the dead body of the priest because God had killed the priest. God says, I'm inside. For our God is a consuming fire. I want you to come. Come to me. Come and, come and inherit me. I am fire. I am glory. I am power. I am everything. Come. Take me. And go out and exhibit me. For the world to turn to me. Because I formed you for my glory. And you must show forth my praise. You must exhibit me. These people have I found for myself. They shall exhibit my manliness, my valor. Is that correct? I formed them to exhibit me. All right. 
you know what? First thing first, tabernacle is next. First one, Isaiah 43 verse 21. Next is tabernacle. Let's go. <clears throat> one, two, read. One, two, go ahead. One, two, read. I explain it to you. It didn't say praise, right? It says what? Valor. It talked about action. Alright? So God formed you to manifest God in action. Alright? Okay, if you don't answer me well, you start jumping now. Alright? Okay. But what's something? He has formed us but we are outside. Number two, tabernacle, go there. So what does God say? Where is God in the tabernacle? It's inside, right? And, and what does he say? What is God saying to those that he formed for himself? He's saying, 1 Timothy 2.4. That's what he says. Look at what he says. Quickly. First Timothy 2 4. Read what he said. One, two, read. All right. So, he wants us saved. He wants to come to the of the truth. I'll hold on a minute. A, a, a moment. Why mm -hmm. does God want us to come? To the knowledge of the truth. Why? Are you here? Why does God want us to come to the knowledge of the truth? <clears throat> because of the benefits of this knowledge. Hello. Because of the benefits of this knowledge. Hear me. This knowledge here, for your information, is experiential knowledge. It's not revelation knowledge. <laughs> God wants you saved and to come to aspiration knowledge of the truth. This is not revelation knowledge. This is aspiration knowledge. All right? Jesus and the Father, who is higher? Jesus and the Father, who is higher? The Father talks experiential knowledge. Jesus talks revelation knowledge. The Father, the Father speaks experiential knowledge. Jesus speaks revelation knowledge. Did you hear that? I want to listen carefully. Okay? Okay, hear it. <clears throat> Jesus said, you shall know the truth, right? And the truth shall make you free. The word know there is ginosko. So you shall ginosko the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Ginosko is revelation knowledge. Ginosko G I N O S K O. Ginosko. As in G for God. I for interest. And for night session. O for off the ground that you will soon do. <laughs> All right? Okay. 
So Jesus said, you shall have revelation knowledge of the truth. And it shall give you the ability to walk in liberty. Independent of any circumstances. Right? Meanwhile, the father is inside saying, come. Come here. Who we have all meant to be saved and to come to the knowledge. The word knowledge there is not ginosko, it's epignosis. Epignosis is knowledge through fellowship, it's experiential. Look at it. And to come unto the epignosis of the truth. Epignosis is experiential knowledge, it's not revelation knowledge. Hello. If you are if you are here, you want to remain a beggar, always begging God. Do it, Lord. Do, 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 do it, Lord. Oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. Oh God of Zerubbabel and Zechariah. Oh God. Of Mordecai and Ahasuerus, Atasasis and Media. <laughs> Thou art the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, higher than the highest. Mighty men in battles. <laughs> Why are they not coming? It says, Isaiah 33, verse 14. Isaiah 33, verse 14. All of you want to read. What if I don't come back? <laughs> because our God is a consuming fire. Let me just stay where I am. Outer court is okay. Moses, you go and come and tell us. But God says, no. I don't want Moses alone to keep coming. I want everyone to be like Moses. Because I made no my methods to Moses. I want everyone of you to become a Moses. Moses said, I will that all of God's books will be prophets. Why would they not come? The sinners in Zion are afraid. I said, come. He said, no. Outer court is okay. Oh. <laughs> I better go. Why? He said, fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall go near fire and come back alive? <laughs> I better go. I am saved. Heaven, heaven is my heaven is my goal, oh. <laughs> Now that I'm here, I know I will make heaven. I will come. <laughs> what if I die? <laughs> he says, come. He says, ah, thank God there is there are doors oh, before I get to where you are. I'm not a pastor. I don't want Allah. But God says, okay, Jesus, die. So when Jesus died, all the three doors collapsed. When the three doors collapsed, he said, the man from outside, you can see me. Bible tells us when he died, the veil tore apart. God was no more a secret. God says, I will pour out myself upon all flesh. All flesh. All flesh. That means from outside, you can see inside. That I am no more judgment. I am now love. 
Jesus has taken away my wrath. The middle wall is gone. The veil is torn. The way, the truth, and the life is dead. They have collapsed. You cannot look inside. So when he said Jesus died, the way collapsed, the truth collapsed, the life collapsed, and everything was bare for anyone who wants God to catch. And now Paul came and said, though he be not far from every one of us. He didn't say he's not far from Christians. He said, you are no Christians. You don't know God. God is not that far from every one of us. Anybody can see him because the way the truth and life have collapsed. As a matter of fact, in him we now live and move and have our being. Because Jesus said, it is better I die. If I don't die, God will not come. So I died that the way the truth and the life may collapse. And now it is done. Hallelujah. 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 You shall be no scold the truth. You shall have revelation knowledge of the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You have gained independence now. You can live life now. But that's not all the benefits of revelation knowledge. Look at the one that, that charges me the most of all of the benefits. Psalms 91 verse 14. Eh, eh, eh. Eh. Le moto kobaya. Mono koroti kiroko tokoto. Azi mala mala moko. Everybody, I want to look at it. One, two, read. Stop. Now, let me tell you. That's where it stops. That one. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. But look at something beyond that one. Next one, go ahead, I want to read. Knowledge. This is, this is revelation knowledge. That can grow to become an experience. I will set him on her. Benefit number three of revelation knowledge is promotion in life. Promotion in life. That's number three. And that's Psalms 91 verse 14. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Can you, can, you, can you look at this, everybody? This is not a promise to all the crowd. This is a promise to the person, individual person. He didn't say, I will set them on high. He said, I will set him on high because he had known my name. Oh, boy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh boy. Hallelujah. Number four. Number four benefits, right? Absolute enjoyment of inheritance. Absolute enjoyment of inheritance. Absolute enjoyment of inheritance. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11. Verses 8 and 9.
Proverbs chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Want to read? All right, stop. This one, everybody look at it. This deliverance, the righteous, they didn't do anything about it. It's the Lord that did it. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. And the wicked come in his stead. The Lord delivers the righteous. Is that correct? Because you are seeing deliverance here, right? Delivered, right? Okay. But look at verse 9 shows a different kind of deliverance. Verse 9, 1, 2, read. Everybody, 1, 2, read. Okay. In verse 8, he says the righteous is delivered out of trouble. So, he is delivered. Verse 9, he says to knowledge shall the just, which is also the righteous, be delivered. I thought he's already delivered. The first deliverance that you have is what comes by hope. Verse 9. Verse 9. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the righteous or the just be delivered into the inheritance. That's what he's talking about. Not deliverance from demons. Because verse 8 already delivered. Delivered into the inheritance. Delivered into the inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you? Eloma molo 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 molo. How many of you want to be beggars? Lift your hand. Let me pray for you. You want to be a beggar as a Christian? I have a, I, there's, there's an anointing on me right now. <laughs> you can come forward. Hey, the God that is saying, come. Bible tells us that God raises the poor out of the dust. He doesn't want to remain there. He raises the beggar out of the dung hill. He doesn't like it when you're among the crowd begging for bread. He wants to produce bread and not beg for bread. He wants to have a bakery of buying bread every week. I'm telling you that <laughs> you need to have a bakery. That's what God is saying. I know put that big bread in the house. They don't buy. All right. So guys, benefits of experiential knowledge. Are you there? No one. It produces trust. Number one, it produces trust.
Are you there? Book of Psalm, chapter 9, verse 10. Psalm 9, verse 10. Hallelujah. Are you there? Want to read? Those who know his name, that means those who have experiential knowledge of God, will put trust in him. He produces trust. Number two, number two, are you still here? <laughs> number two, it produces perfect prosperity. Perfect prosperity. It produces perfect prosperity. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Everybody on the screen want to read. Because he trusted in the word, the, 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 the term perfect peace here in the Hebrew is shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. That we keep him in shalom, shalom, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why, why is his mind stayed on God? Because he has come to trust in God. That, that's number what? Number two, right? Number three. It produces a mind that stays on God. It produces a mind that stays on God. You get it? Number four. It is, it is the secret. It is the secret for reigning in life. It is the secret for reigning in life. Oh boy, that's something we must spend time on. I'll show you in a moment, okay? Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Please, don't run away from hell because there's something about it. Romans 5 17. One, two, read. All right, all right, leave it on the screen. I hold on no. Much more, they will receive, they will receive grace or abundance of grace. They will receive abundance of grace, right? And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. When you are born again, you receive the gift of righteousness, right? Right, good. But righteousness alone cannot reign in life. It needs abundance of grace. Righteousness alone cannot reign in life. It needs abundance of grace. Leave that scripture on the screen, please. Just leave it. Just leave it, Jaja Jaja. 
Shall, this is the question now because we said it's sick for running in life, right? So it says, those who receive abundance of grace and give to the running in life. Is that correct? So if you receive abundance grace, how do you know in life? <laughs> question. Where shall abundance of grace be found? Yes. I talk it. <laughs> Where shall abundance of grace be found? It's not in kitchen. It's not in classroom. It's not in the office. It's in marketplace. Then it tells you, epignosis produces abundance of grace. Revelation knowledge. You say, how can you prove it? Second Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Grace! And peace be multiplied. Ha ha. Ah. Hey. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Oh boy. Shayla Boba 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 Shika. Mande Grasto Shele Bigra on Profigis Kaluti. Sayuri and Kropotole. One, two, three. Verse 2. Grace. Alright, let me read to you. Grace and peace be multiplied. We need abundance of grace, right? Grace and peace are multiplied unto you through the epignosis, experiential knowledge of God and of Jesus. This is the knowledge that God said in first for I will that you are saved and come to this knowledge because through this knowledge grace and peace are multiplied and you need multiplied grace to reign in life grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied when you beg God for long. Dash me small grace to rainy life. I beg. If you can just ask small grace, I will glorify you. He doesn't want it. Listen, let me say this to you. Glorifying God is not an option. You were bought to glorify God. God's about to kick your head, you know what I'm saying? You are to glorify God. Otherwise, I'll throw you in the bus. Because God ain't laughing. It comes to matter of glorifying God, he ain't laughing. Go and bust your head with nine millimeters. <laughs> so don't deceive yourself. Say, if you do it, I will glorify you. Eh? He doesn't have to do it to glorify him. You must glorify him. You have not read it. He said, You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. To glorify means to exhibit and show splendor of. <laughs> he said, I, I promise. You promise with you. <laughs> to glorify means to exhibit and to, and, to, and to show the splendor of someone or something. Look at them. That's what they do. They'll be promising God what? <laughs> Father, I promise to glorify. <laughs> I, I, you, know, you know what he says? He says, look at this guy. He ain't got no sense that he will glorify me. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Imagine your shirt. Say, I promise you will wear me if you are your man. <laughs> you said the no boy you were not to enter. <laughs> you know what they have told me? 
as a priority committee. He said for those that, that, that are acting foolish, go and tell them. The clothes they are wearing, they didn't plan to be at the camp right now. Your clothes, they didn't plan to be at the camp right now. They have no choice. You own the clothes, therefore they have to come to camp. You don't have any choice. God owns you. What he has decided that you will be, you will be. If you like, play with it. If you were wearing a t-shirt for this committee, the, the, the very day you're about to leave, and it tore, will you wear it? If you have already ironed the shirt, starch it, and as you're putting it on, it now tore the armpit level, at the armpit area, what will you do? Will you just fold and say, ah, I will re I'll repair you. You say, what? You, many times, you're not, you don't get angry with yourself, but with this shirt. What? Just pull it and just... Psh. Why? The guy said, he doesn't want to go to camp. The shirt doesn't feel like going to camp. What if the shirt spoke up? So I'm not going to camp. What would you do? What? My shirt... What do you suppose God feels when he says, I'm not going for soul winning? What you I made, my product, what I bought, judgment day will surprise people. Judgment day. Be doing anyhow. He says, You're not your own. I bought to the price. Hallelujah. Benefit number. Number five, four or five. Number five, experiential knowledge. Perfect relationship with power. Perfect relationship with power, with power. Experiential knowledge perfects relationship with power. Let me explain to you. When you are not at that level of experiential knowledge, you adopt faith for power, right? You lay hands and trust God to do it. Right? Because you are operating at a level of faith, revelation knowledge. At expression level, Peter does not have to believe that God will do it. Peter only just says, what I have, I'm giving you. It, that means Peter had a perfect relationship with power. So expression knowledge, perfect relationship with power, it doesn't hope power will show up. You didn't get that. If you didn't get it, go to the other campground. Aspiration knowledge perfects relationship with power. Tss. Hallelujah. Okay. I said aspiration knowledge, right? Is what brings you to God, right? Where you have trust. One on one, I, I, I told you that, right? I said it's personal, is between you and God. Revelation between you and Jesus. The truth. Okay, watch something. Is God powerful or God is power? Is God powerful or God is power? Okay, let's check if God is power or not. Matthew. Mark 14, 62. Mark chapter 14, verse 62. One, two. Everybody, come on. One, two, read. Right hand of power. If you remove power, 
what you have, right hand of God. So God is power. You shall see the sun sitting on the right hand of power. Right? So God is power. What does expression knowledge do? It prefers relationship with God who is power. Expression knowledge prefers relationship with power. I want us to honor the Lord quickly. Just go ahead and say, Lord, I honor you with my offerings, with my tithes, with my first fruits, with my special seed. Father God, we bring to you an offering due your name. And we receive the harvest that only God can provide. Thank you for the privilege to give. You own all things. You have no need of anything. But you have said, bring this substance as proof of our love. And so we demonstrate our love this day. And Lord, we receive of your spirit the abundance of God. We shall be changed forever. We will not be the same again. We shall be born on the wings of your spirit. From glory to glory. From favor to favor. From greatness to greatness. And it shall be all for the advancement of your kingdom. And it shall be to you for a name of praise. Glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus mighty name and descent said. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, shots, let's give to the Lord. I want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith in you and in your word, I receive the remission for all my sins. I receive eternal life of my spirit. I declare this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you 
And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. Father, come take your place in my life. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, re to, to open up yourself right now for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meeting, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds. For those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray. Because you have just been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Shalaman gredisto jele paridiga soja lege brondo sevra ika. Go ahead. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Hey, la go say. The rest of us speak in our tongues. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. In my life. Come and take. Glory to God, your place. Yes, Lord. In my life, come and take your place.